Aloha, I'm Representative Karen Awana here at the Dialogue and Friendship Dinner, which is being held at Washington Place. Today is April 12th, and I'm just looking forward to a wonderful opportunity for many of uh, government officials, businesses, um, various faith-based organizations, and our governmental legislators to have very good dialogue with other um, people of different organizations and hopefully we can build positive bridges that can bring many groups together and at the same time help both the people of Hawaii as well as the people in California and as well as Turkey. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have Kahu Kurt Kekuna from Kawaiha'o Church open with a blessing. Governor, distinguished and honored guests, aloha. aloha. Oh, I love to say that in this kind of setting. We're all friends, right? Yes. Oh, very underwhelming, friends. <laughs> very <laughs> underwhelming. The, your, your words and your actions and your passion belie who you are. We're friends, aren't we? Yes. yes. All right. Actually, uh, that's fine. Thanks very much. Uh, and because we're friends, I'm going to ask that we do this um, together. This is in the effort of bringing many kinds of peoples together. And that, I believe, is the, the desire of our God, our almighty God. So, will you please stand and will you enact this by turning to the people on the other tables and greeting them with aloha, handshake, a hug, whatever is your tradition. Please go ahead and do that. <laughs> and if you will keep on standing folks just uh, as respect to one another and just join hands with the people that are nearest to you that'd be great come on we're friends remember join hands please and please let's pray uh, let's pray together Almighty God, we gather before you in your presence and we give you great thanks for this night. Thank you for the conception and the desire of others to bring all peoples together. Surely, Lord, in our different cultures, we have dissimilarities, but just as surely we have that which is similar. So we thank you for this opportunity to get to know what is similar, what, what is common between us and how can we grow our friendship Thank you for the minds who have put this night together. Thank you that this is the second annual and look forward to many more. And we do pray, Lord, that all of us will understand, realize that it is your desire that we know one another to such an extent where barriers mean nothing, but friendships do. We thank you for this night, for our speakers, for our time, and especially for this food. For we pray in the name of Almighty God, and the people of God say together, Amen. Please be seated. Aloha. Ahi ahi kaku. I am Tezjani Namlar, the CEO of Pacifica Institute. We're going to share here. So here. I hope I get this right. I'm Representative Karen Owana, House Chair on International Affairs. Thank you, Governor. We would like to welcome you to the second annual Dialogue and Friendship Dinner. And as I look into the audience, I can see that we have many who were present at last year's event that was held at the Japanese um, Cultural Center. Tejan, can you share with us a little bit about what the purpose of this event with those who are participating for the first time? Sure. The Dialogue and Friendship Dinner attempts to do many things. First and foremost, this gathering provides an open platform of friendship, building an understanding between people of different cultures and from different regions. Events have been throughout in California, Nevada, Colorado, and now in Hawaii. 
Tonight, we have invited a diverse group whom I hope before the night ends, you will have taken some time to introduce yourself to those on your table. You will find that you have much in common. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to take a few moments to introduce you to some very special guests who have joined us for this evening. And I'd like to draw your attention right here in front of me to the center table located in front. We have with us this evening the Honorable Neil Abercrombie, Governor of the State of Hawaii. His lovely wife, Dr. Nancy Ellen Carraway. You want to get the next two? Kemal. And Kemal Yildizolu, who is an ambassador for Turkey that came to here um, as a high school um, a student and now graduate of a university and working in Honolulu. <laughs> the Honorable Aydin Topçu, Consul General of Turkey. Mr. Ibrahim Barlas, President of the Pacifica Institute. Pastor or Kahu Kurt Kekuna, Kavai Ha'o Church. Um, I believe his wife is not here with us right now, but we have Mr. Sava Silman, Vice President of the California Turkish American Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Robert Allen Jones, Acting Special Agent in Charge of the FBI. Is he here? Mm -hmm. And Dr. Stephen Combs, Dean of Social Sciences at Hawaii Pacific University. Is he here? He'll probably be um, arriving with us shortly. And we also have members of the Hawaii State Legislature, including the International Affairs Committee at both the House and the Senate. And at this time, I'd like to ask if you can please stand and be recognized. And in the audience this evening, there are members in the Turkish business community and members of the California Turkish Chamber of Commerce. Please stand and be recognized. We have a special message from Senator Daniel Akaka, and I'd like to read it. It is with great pleasure that I extend my warmest aloha and best wishes to Governor Neil Abercrombie, members of the Hawaii House of Representatives Committee on International Affairs, the Pacifica Institute, and other distinguished guests to the second annual Dialogue and Friendship Dinner. I would also like to extend a special aloha to the Honorable Aydin Topçu, Consul General of Turkey in Los Angeles. I commend the Republic of Turkey, whose economy is eighth largest in Europe and 17th largest in the world on its contributions to the global community. Tonight, the people of Hawaii continue to proudly foster this valuable cultural, educational, and economical relationship with Turkey. This evening is an important symbol of the growing bond of friendship and goodwill between our two nations. Indeed, this bond of friendship promotes the many benefits our special relationship offers both of our communities. My thoughts are with all of you for a most enjoyable celebration in the spirit, uh, spirit and pro mm, prosperity. Aloha. We will shortly be opening our dinner buffet, and a waiter will come to your table and um, just acknowledge when it's time for you to partake. Just a little housekeeping information. The women's restroom is located to the right after the dining room on the first level to my right, your, my left or right. And the men's restroom is located right around the corner. And if you need any assistance, please let um, one of our hosts or hostesses know and they will direct you to that area. So at this time, Yes, at this time, we'd like to also introduce you some Turkish instrumental music while you're doing your food. Thank you. you have it? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so please enjoy network and make friends. Consummate public servant who works tireless, tirelessly for the people of Hawaii, Governor Abercrombie has traveled throughout the world and in an interview held earlier this year, Governor Abercrombie applauded the efforts of President Barack Obama for his efforts to improve the existing complexities of the visa and foreign visitor program. Tourism, as many of you know, is one of Hawaii's largest industries and providing support in this area is relief that Hawaii greatly needs. Our governor is aware that the interconnectivity is key at many levels, whether it is tourism, economic development, or events such as the Dialogue and Friendship Dinner, which we are all participating in this evening. Tonight, we are extremely proud and fortunate to have with us the Honorable Neil Abercrombie. Thank you, Karen. Mahalo, Karen, thank you very much. Isn't she doing a wonderful job? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen and dear friends, aloha. aloha. This evening, we're privileged to be in the home of Queen Lily Okalani. I hope all of you, if you have not had the opportunity, will make certain that you take with you tonight this small brochure that we have. I say we, my, my wife and I, Dr. Nancy Carraway, are uh, very, very proud to, in a sense, be not the curators, but certainly the stewards uh, for Washington Place. and. Uh, we urge all of you to take one of these brochures with you tonight and spend a few moments, especially even the, those of you here, from here in Hawaii, I bet it's a long, long time before since you've actually examined where we are. Some of us have come on many occasions to Washington Place and, and maybe need a little reminder where we say this great historical treasure of the state of Hawaii. The reason that I, I cite it is that uh, this... Uh, for the Consul General and for our, 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 our new friends uh, from Turkey and, uh, and uh, Turkish Americans that are here visiting from California and elsewhere. This has been the center of social and political life uh, in the islands for more than 160 years. Uh, the building, uh, of course, was begun in 1842. And without going through the entire uh, uh, history that took place then, my point really is, is that from the kingdom on, from the establishment of the kingdom, and most certainly uh, from the uh, point of view of uh, those who occupied Iolani Palace across the way and here now at Washington Place, the kings and queens of Hawaii were internationalists. The kings and queens uh, of Hawaii uh, took uh, the message of aloha from Hawaii the world over. They were welcomed in the in foreign capitals the world over. Uh, they were comfortable there. Uh, it was a, a focal point uh, for uh, the history of Hawaii that an international outlook and reach was something that uh, was treasured in Hawaii. Certainly, one can understand the origins of it. After all, uh, the original Polynesian ancestors of everyone in Hawaii, the forebears uh, who came uh, to Hawaii came from across the seas, uh, thousands, literally thousands of miles, following the stars to paradise. Uh, and so uh, Hawaiians and have always been world travelers in that respect. And those of us who followed the original Polynesians, virtually everyone in this room who now lives in, in Hawaii, uh, came from someplace else, literally. Everyone in Hawaii is an immigrant. Everything in Hawaii is an immigrant because I can assure you, when the volcanoes thrust up out of the sea, there, was, there were no seeds, there were no plants, there were no trees, there were no human beings. No, the islands were thrust up out of the sea and then literally everything and everyone 
came to Hawaii. So this land has not only blessed us by uh, allowing us to be here, giving us this, uh, this, uh, this outpost in the center of the Pacific Ocean, uh, but it, it, it serves to uh, every day of our lives when we awaken, we can see the limitations of our existence. The sea is right there. The Hawaiians taught us from the very beginning that we had to respect the land, that we had to be stewards uh, of the land, uh, that we were a part of nature, a part of paradise. We didn't rule it. We didn't secure it. We didn't dominate it. On the contrary, we are a part of it and have a role to play in it. And so uh, everyone in Hawaii is an internationalist because virtually everyone's ancestry, including those who have uh, blended with uh, the original Polynesians uh, by marriage and otherwise <laughs> over time, uh, have literally found themselves then a conglomeration of people, a diversity that truly defines us rather than divides us in the spirit of aloha. And it's in that spirit tonight that we welcome the Council General uh, we welcome the, the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Inanlar. Uh, we welcome our dear friend, Kimal. Kimal, stand up. Uh, here's the true ambassador from, from Turkey and a proud graduate of Kahuku High School. Right here. When I said our diversity defines us, I meant it, didn't I, Kimal? Right. They would say, What's, uh, uh, who, who's that? Well, that's the famous Turkish graduate of, of Kahuku High School uh, out there. And, uh, and Mr. Barlas, uh, president of the Pacific, Pacifica Institute here tonight, and of course, our, our new good friend uh, and, uh, and uh, chief cheerleader for coming back to Hawaii, bringing his family in order to make sure that all Turks are taken care of here in Hawaii is a Council General Topchu. We're so happy to have you here tonight. Thank you very much. And so, uh, Council General, you will find that everyone you meet here tonight, all of our friends in the legislature and elsewhere, all trace their ancestries the world over. So when Karen and, and Jean put together the, uh, the, uh, and the rest of the members of the, of the International Committee uh, put together this uh, event this evening, it is in recognition of our commitment as the people of Hawaii to an internationalist attitude and to a, a uh, commitment uh, to see to it that that legacy which we enjoy today uh, provided for us by, by the kings and queens of, of times past uh, will manifest itself here in the 21st century in a vigorous and forward-looking way. We're pleased to have you here tonight. I'm pleased to be able to welcome you here tonight in the spirit of aloha, and we look forward to whatever events, circumstances, and conditions that we can construe with and for one another in time to come. Aloha. Mahalo. Thank you so much. Um, beautiful verse and kind words. And uh, we know, Governor, you like art, um, and um, we brought a gift to you from Turkey. Um, I'd like to invite yourself and also Consul General of Turkey to present the gift. Yes, and I, I, I think I have an idea what it's going to be, and I have an idea that, uh, that my wife is going to be the best fan that Turkey ever had <laughs> yeah. very shortly. So this is, let me make an explanation. This is a called calligraphy. It's an Islamic, it's a Turkish art. Um, and it's written by a, one of the famous calligrapher in Turkey and then uh, came all, all, of, all of the way from Turkey. And I'd like to um, extend uh, our Council General. Can you uh, recite what it says for those who can't see it? <laughs> yes. Please? No, it's good to yes, OK. It says on the top, Governor Neil Abercrombie. And the, the, the artistry is on the first name and the last name. And at, at the bottom, Pacific Institute 2012 and the signature of the um, calligrapher and Istanbul. So uh, if I sign a bill like this, I don't know if it's not a forgery. <laughs> And 
Here comes the second gift for donor and also first lady, um, Dr. Nancy Cameron, please. Interaction here. So, um, you know, um, Turkey is well known with the um, textile, especially cotton, um, towels, and rubs. And this is um, also from Turkey, and our first lady's name on it. So she'll she will have some hard time to forget us. <laughs> so um, and it will be uh, wonderful with your beautiful necklace. <laughs> that th that is from also Istanbul. <laughs> So do, do you think the next, if I sign some bill celebrating a memorandum of understanding between Turkey and Hawaii, should I wear this? Thank you very much. And also, I'd like to um, um, present a gift for our um, uh, friend, Representative Awana. Where are you going? <laughs> I'd like to invite at this time the Vice President of California Turkish Chamber of Commerce, Sawash Yilmaz, to present her gift. And before I move to, move to our next, inviting our next speaker, I'd like to um, express my thoughts uh, about governor, uh, um, especially the meeting that we had today after afternoon, that my inspiration, my admiration has been uh, tripled and quadrupled, especially the, the, your insight of, of, of the uh, country, our country, Turkey, and our um, um, relations with our neighbors, how deep you are uh, knowledgeable that um, um, uh, that uh, I'm I'm so impressed by that um, and I'm so happy that we have great leaders who understands the region and and the issues going on. Thank you. May I ask you to please stick around for my campaign? <laughs> now, if I could just figure out the politics of Hawaii, I'd be all right. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Governor. Our next speaker is well versed on the issues surrounding international relations. With a strong background in foreign affairs, the Consul General has served in Kabul, Afghanistan and London before being assigned to serve as Consul General in Los Angeles in October of 2011. He provided support to the Chief of Cabinet to the Turkish Deputy Prime Minister overseeing economic and financial affairs. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the Council General of Turkey in Los Angeles, the Honorable Aydin Topçu. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, aloha. aloha. Uh, it is my distinct pleasure to be in the state of Hawaii. I feel myself privileged for having the opportunity to come together with such a distinguished group of people, and I extend my sincere thanks for your gracious hospitality. I have many things to say about my country, but I'm aware that my time is very limited. If I had a magic wand, I, will use, I would use it to encourage you to learn more about my country, either by reading relevant documents, books, or by visiting Turkey, or both of them. Ladies and gentlemen, as a matter of fact, Turkey is now being considered as a rising star in her region and beyond. Turkey occupies a unique space in the middle of European, Asian, and African landmass, and it is an actor with multiple regional identities that cannot be reduced to one unified character. 
Our history further enhances our multi-regional identity. We are heirs of the Ottoman Empire, which once controlled and peacefully ruled territories spreading from Balkans to Yemen, from Caucasus to Africa. We have still strong cultural bonds with the peoples of this massive geography. Turks, Arabs, Bosnians, Albanians, Greeks, Armenians, Assyrians, and Jews lived together for hundreds of years, creating a unique sense of shared identity and ethnic and religious diversity. Turkey's diverse regional composition lends it the capability of maneuvering in several regions simultaneously. This geography now is of critical importance for the whole globe as the course of as the course of developments here will have a direct impact on the nature of the new world order. Therefore, Turkey's policies and choices will be of particular significance. For the last 10 years, Turkey has gone through a major process of transformation in nearly every field, particularly human rights, democracy, political stability, economy, and foreign policy. The field of economy is a good example. Against the pessimistic global economic picture, today Turkey is the 16th largest economy in the world and sixth in Europe. With a population of more than 70 million, Turkey has managed to triple its gross national income in just 10 years. Per capita income increased from 3,500 US dollars in 2002 to 10,600 US dollars in 2011. Last year, our growth rate was the second in the world, coming after China. And our target is to be among the 10 largest economies of the world by the year 2023. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for a long time, Turkey and the United States have been two close allies under the NATO umbrella. Over the decades, this relationship has transcended the limits of a merely political and military alliance, evolving into a strategic partnership that comprises not only political, but also economic, cultural, and social spheres. Today, based on common universal values of democracy, respect for human rights, rule of law, and free market economy, the two countries have been striving vigorously to further our shared interests and achieve common objectives in a wide geography. In characterizing the Turkish-US relations, we prefer using three R's, robust, relevant, and resilient. Robust, because Turkey and the U.S. are using their comparative advantages to work together to address challenges on the widest of spectrums. Relevant, because we have together successfully overcome the strictly security and defense-dominated defense framework in our relationship and remodeled this partnership into something new and bigger that serves our mutual interests today. When there are challenges that require a collective, multilateral response, like today in Syria, for example, Turkey and the U.S. are there, working together to shape international responses to crises that cannot be solved unilaterally. Resilient, because while we have had our serious ups and downs over the past, we have, time and again, transcended our differences, as important as they were, to keep the bigger picture in focus and work to solve the many challenges we are up against. <coughs> Besides the cooperation between the two states, I should also touch upon the important role the Turkish Americans and Turkish citizens living in the U.S. play in bridging the two countries. I firmly believe that whatever the mood of government-to-government -government relations, a healthy and sustainable relationship between our countries could only be built by increasing the interaction among the non-governmental organizations and people-to-people -people contacts. In this respect, I have been receiving very positive feedbacks from our American friends about the trips to Turkey organized by the Turkish-American non-governmental organizations, including the Pacifica Institute. In light of this, I strongly encourage you to visit Turkey and, in addition to government officials, establish genuine contacts with the ordinary people of my country. Although Turkey has many valuable assets, the most amazing one is its people and their hospitality, just like the people of Hawaii. Dear guests, I would like to extend my gratitude to the organizers of this dinner for their efforts and to the people of Hawaii for their hospitality. As I said at the beginning, if I had a magic wand, I would use it to make you visit and learn more about my country. Thank you.
Thank you, Council General Tuopchu. The Pacifica Institute was established in 2003 as a nonprofit organization by a group of Turkish Americans. Pacifica Institute designs and executes projects covering social welfare, education, poverty, conflict resolution issues in collaboration with scholars, activists, artists, politicians, and religious leaders' communities. Late last year, an Anatolian festival was held on the Orange County Fairgrounds to introduce and familiarize the general public to this area of the world. And I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to attend this event, and I would highly recommend that all of you attend the next event, which is scheduled in about two years. So you have enough time to place this event on your calendar and save some money. Tonight, we are pleased to have with us the president of the Pacifica Institute, Ibrahim Barlas. Thank you for the introduction, Karen. Uh, I have prepared a, a very short uh, speech. I hope it won't it won't be bother you. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, good evening, Governor Neil Abercrombie, Council General Aiden Topchu, Hawaii State Senator and Representatives, community and faith leaders, educators, professors, dignitaries, and valuable guests. On behalf of Pacifica Institute, I would like to welcome you to the second annual Dialogue and Friendship Dinner. It's a great pleasure to be here this evening among our distinguished guests in beautiful Hawaii. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Governor Abercrombie to be host of this event and open this beautiful mansion for this evening. And also would like to thank Hawaii State House of Representatives Committee on International Affairs Chair Karen, Chair Karen Awana and my colleagues Ali Altunkaya and Tejan Inanlar for their efforts to bring bringing us together. Pacifica Institute, as mentioned, it's a nonprofit established by Turkish Americans with local branches in Western US. We promote social peace and, mu and mutual understanding in the diverse communities that we live in. Our vision is to have a community in which people from all walks of life interact with each other and cooperate to serve and thereby strengthening civil society and promoting the de development of human values. Through intellectual interactions, opportunities, and the form of conferences, panels, art performances, festivals, and presenta presentations about issues, we bring people together from different communities and ethnic backgrounds. Diversity is one of the key defining characteristics of the American society. Today in the world, there are many conflicts, tensions, polarizations, based on ethnic, racial, religious, and ideological differences. We believe that dialogue not only promotes softening of such current tensions, but also works as a preventive levice for probable future confrontations. To develop intercultural interaction and strengthening the relations between the United States and Turkey, we do intercultural trips to Turkey. Nothing is more valuable than learning about our other cultures through personal experience and face-to-face -face interactions. We have cultivated very good friendships and initiated mutual beneficial projects over the course of last eight years since initiating this project. I have very much enjoyed being a guest here in Hawaii and would like to invite you back to Turkey. Hopefully we can match your generous hospitality there. I would also like to acknowledge our source of inspiration, Fethullah Gülen. Mr. Gülen is a Turkish intellectual thinker who is currently residing in Pennsylvania. The service movement, also known as the Gülen movement, has contributed to the de development of social peace and dialogue in many parts of the world through its activities in education, civil society, and international diplomacy. We hope to build upon that legacy and contribute to a better future and better world for all the children of Adam. Once again, on behalf of the Turkish American, I would like to thank for the well-known hospitality of people of Hawaii, friendship, and open-minded that you extended 
here tonight. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Mahalo. Thank you, Mr. Barlas. Now, as we get to, uh, uh, get to the end of the program, I'd like to invite um, one of our um, lovely friends, um, Dr. Tamari Albertini. She is a professor at um, Philosophy Department at UH Manoa. And um, she's also one of the person that I was lucky to be in Turkey with her and learned so much thing about my country through her. So please help me welcome Dr. Albertini. Good evening. I think we're very lucky tonight. We have two hosts. We have the governor himself who is hosting us with his gracious wife, Nancy. And of course we have Pacifica. Um, and they're taking care of us just wonderfully. What you saw today, or rather tonight here, you know, the way how we were fed and entertained, that's really the spirit of Turkey. Now, I can tell you that because I've been there several times and last time, just last year. Now, Tezjan said I had five minutes. Um, well, <clears throat> you know, I thought, my goodness, five minutes. What am I going to say about, you know, about Turkey in just five minutes? So I won't even try. Even if I had five hours, I wouldn't be able to do justice to the uh, very rich, legacy of Turkey to its complex and um, very rich uh, culture, art, and so forth. So I'll just uh, go straight to how it is that I am here tonight and what, you know, how, was, how were these connections made? Um, when the state of Hawaii introduced Islam Day two and a half years ago, um, I felt the university had to do something about it and I was very lucky that I had the dean's support, um, Dr. Tom Bingham sitting right there. He financed the day, and what we did then with James Frankel from the religion department is organize a whole day of events. We wanted to have Islam from morning till late, late afternoon. And there were two gentlemen who um, showed up, and they were there for the entire day, and I did not know them. I do know them now. Um, Ali is one of them, if you would like to stand up, Ali. <laughs> and I know Kazim is somewhere. Where are you, Kazim? Kazim was the other gentleman. <laughs> Ali and Kazim talked to me. They said something about Pacifica, um, American Turkish Chamber of Commerce, um, that they were going to stay in touch with me. And I thought, sure, and um, expected that that would be the end of it. But a few months later, there came a strong delegation like uh, tonight. You know, and everybody was from Pacifica. And it was all about, you know, we, we do friendship between Turks and Americans. We want Americans to go to Turkey. Uh, this is really about knowing each other, encountering each other and all of that. And uh, would you help us find people who would like to go on a trip? And I thought, yeah, why not? I, I knew Turkey. I had always very favorable impressions about the country. And they left. And I hadn't heard from them for a while. And I thought, OK, you know. You always meet nice people and everybody's polite and that would be it. Instead, a letter of invitation came and my husband and I found out that we were invited to Turkey. My impression was, you know, I was going to help you find people to go to Turkey. I never knew we were going to be invited. We couldn't go that year, but then we, we went in the following year and Tess John was, uh, I would call him our chicharone. You know, Tess John was taking care of everything. You know, I mean, any concern, anything we needed, food, drinks, uh, sites, uh, translations, everything. We had an incredible time for 10 days. We, we started in Istanbul, they flew us to Izmir, we drove to Ephesus, we, we went to see the, the, home, the home of St. Mary, where Christians and Muslims go on a pilgrimage. Of course, we saw ancient Ephesus, and I won't bother you with all the beautiful, beautiful locations we went to, because remember, I only have five minutes, and I guess two minutes I've taken already. So um, I'll tell you rather about some of the people we met on that trip, because of course, you know, going through the incredible cultural landscape of, of Turkey is, is a privilege. It, it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. But what was even more beautiful, we all felt on that trip, was meeting people from different walks of life. Um, we met, thanks to Tess John and, and all the helpers, uh, who were always some, something like invisible helpers. It's only after a week or so that we realized how many people worked hard for us to be able to go to a hotel, to go to a restaurant, 
uh, to have a driver who would you know, stay with us for the entire day. And you know, we, we were taken to very official places. We went, for instance, to see Zeman. Zeman is a major newspaper in Turkey. And uh, we were very impressed, incredible locations. We were taken to universities, entire universities that a few years ago didn't even exist on um, prime location um, in Istanbul. You can imagine you know, how expensive real estate is in, in, in Istanbul. So having a, you know, a gigantic campus right there tells you something about um, how much very wealthy Turks obviously do care about education in their country. Now, the one event that uh, we, everybody loved on that trip was when we were taken to a small village. We arrived there in the middle of the night, and uh, we were late. But the villagers had waited for us for many hours. When we got there, the women were you know, on one side, the men were on the other side. It's like you know, Christian churches in the 50s or something, you know, <laughs> gender separate. It isn't a long time ago that we had that too, right? And um, they, so the women waited with flowers. We were ushered in in, their, in, their, in a beautiful home. Food came out of nowhere. And it was midnight. These villagers had waited all day just to offer us their hospitality. Next day, uh, we were taken on a tour through the village. I was on a tractor with the women. And we talked, believe it or not, we talked the theology and we talked about Islam's first women. And I told them about my passion for one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad, Um Salama. And it was a wonderful conversation um, that was only possible because we always had translators. My Turkish is unfortunately non-existent. But what I saw, you know, especially in that village, is how this, you know, what is it now? The Fethullah Gulen organization, the whatever association, the invisible hands, whatever that is. We got a sense of how it worked. And how it works, this is my own observation and also my husband's observation, is that whenever there is a task or a project or an idea that needed funding or just helping hands, right? All of a sudden, whether it was a village, a town, or a city, people would network, call each other, figure out how to do something, and it was done, right? So we found out, for instance, that village that uh, there, were, there were sponsors who took care of the agricultural needs, that um, there were sponsors who took care of a lovely, lo lovely place where people could just barbecue and go out on a weekend. We found out that uh, there was definitely lots of help in place for education, whether it's you know, literature, sciences, or, or spirituality. Um, we understood that there was, an, for instance, a retired teacher who would dedicate his time to teach the men and teach the women separately, truly. But uh, the women seemed to be quite happy about it because that, that way they could really say what was on their minds without having to worry about what their husbands would tell them, you know, once they got back home. And, you know, so I'm, I was very pleased when at the end of the trip I found out that this organization, and we still, you know, I'm, I'm still not good at describing it, is not the Fethullah Gulen organization. I really like the, 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 the new name, which is Hizmet, and Hizmet means works. And it's basically works of charity, works that are um, valuable, socially speaking, educationally speaking. And to me, that was actually the first time I had seen in an Islamic country, in an Islamic context, what uh, civil society can do. And I think that's really what Hizmet is all about. Whenever something is needed, people come together and they identify who uh, might you know, be a sponsor or who might have ideas or who might have a location and all of that. I was very, very impressed by it. At the end of our tour, we were taken to uh, a charity organization. Um, maybe, Tesjan, you could help me. What was the name of that charity organization? Sem, Sem, no. Uh, whatever, so, yeah, so you, you better get it from Tesjan. My Turkish pronunciation is not very good, <laughs> okay. And what we saw is somebody deeply committed to charity internationally. This is something like, you know, the Red Cross, at a very, you know, much smaller than the Red Cross, obviously, but uh, very, very efficient. So whenever there is a catastrophe on any continent, you know, let's say Haiti, this organization flies, flies in there with, with medicine, with know-how, with whatever te technology is needed. And whether you are a Muslim or uh, you know, a Christian or whether you have any religion or not, just doesn't matter, help is on its way. This is what I can tell you from my own observation. I was, again, very impressed with it, and I really hope that this people will continue doing the very good work that they do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tamara. And now, um, to, to
to close our event, I'd like to invite Reverend Pilu for the closing prayer. It's a great honor for me to be asked upon arrival if I will close this evening. And as I listened and as I visited, I was uh, really inspired by the spirit that exists in this place. And uh, the word, the Samoan word that comes to my mind that describes such a moment and such a, a gathering is manaya, which literally means, that's our word for beautiful, manaya. And manaya literally means manaya, or spirit inherent. Uh, where the spirit and the fullness of spiritual power uh, is inherent. And so this place is Manaya. This gathering is Manaya because it's filled with the spirit of unity, uh, the spirit of uh, inclusivity, uh, the spirit of oneness. My wife, is, uh, her heritage is uh, Irish, Sc Scottish, uh, English. And so I'm reminded of the Celtic. Uh, understanding of thin spaces and this is a thin moment when heaven and earth there's a, the fine veil between uh, heaven and earth this is such a moment for whenever we uh, dwell in peace and in unity uh, there is manaya there is the presence of the divine and so I was thinking that for our blessing uh, this evening as we leave this place uh, I would like to <clears throat> Uh, simply mention our understanding of uh, our Samoan, our Polynesian understanding of what we term uh, uh, of, go of God. And the word that we use is uh, in Hawaii is akua. And for Samoans, we use the word atua. And, uh, and in conversation with a good friend, a Māori friend of mine uh, from uh, Aotearoa, uh, we, we were so uh, excited to to, to, to put this together, that, that our concept of atua uh, actually comes from the embrace of the spirit or the mana of that, that exists everywhere. And that tu, to tu or to ku is to stand. That we stand and be recognized in the midst of this spirit. And so I invite us as we affirm this divine spirit, the creative spirit that sustains all life and all our lives, uh, as we call it, Atua, I invite us to, to simply say, and we, we say, oh, say Ah is the, <clears throat> is the breath of life, uh, is breath of spirit, and so it is this spirit that sustains us, and uh, that, 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 uh, that created us, enabling us to stand, and then it comes after sustaining us always. So we have Ah, Tu, Wa, we stand in the midst of this spirit and this fullness and this beauty. And so uh, I invite us to say, just say, ah, and we stand, and we continue to say, ah, and affirm that. So let us stand as we do so. Ah, tu, ah, ah, tu, ah. Gracious and eternal spirit, creator and sustainer of all beauty of all life, for the gift of this moment, for the sacredness of this gathering, for we feel and experience your presence of unity here now. Sustain us with your spirit. Fill us with your peace and continue to breathe and enable us to stand and to breathe this unity, this spirit, this life, now and always. May the great spirit of life continue to nurture all of us always as the sun and the wind and the rain continue to nurture this beautiful earth upon which we stand, this earth upon which we shall live together in joy and in unity and in peace forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Pillow. And with this, um, the official part of the program, we end with the prayer. And of course, um, there are more food and desserts, the baklava is there. And so uh, make sure that you met with uh, each other. And then this is the um, time for networking. 
So thank you, uh, Governor. Um, thank you so much. Um, Representative Owana, thank you so much for hosting this beautiful place, uh, this, this event. And I'd like to thank everyone who take their time uh, out of busy schedules and come here to um, share the same ideas. And have a great night. Aloha. My name is Tez John Inanlar, the CEO of the Pacifica Institute. Hello, um, Reverend Pula. Uh, what are your thoughts for tonight's program? Well, I thought it was a rich uh, gathering of, uh, of diverse folk, and yet we certainly experience a sense of unity and oneness, uh, the spirit that brought all of us together. And I think this is the purpose and, uh, and the mission of Pacifica and, and, and those of us who are in support of, of that, of this, this spirit of inclusivity, this spirit of unity, and, uh, uh, and uh, appreciation and embrace of one another. As, uh, as one. So uh, that was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend um, Father Paul, uh, what are your thoughts for tonight's program? Well, it was, it was a typical example of the splendid her Turkish hospitality I've received in so many places that I've been in Turkey and in Boston and, and other places across the United States and since I've gotten here uh, to Honolulu. Uh, it was well organized. Um, uh, the Turkish word hoş geldiniz uh, was certainly in evidence uh, throughout the evening uh, as much as aloha <laughs> and and I thank you all for that um, I thought the presentations were well done and interesting uh, I think there's so much that we could do to work together I think Governor Abercrombie's theme of uh, international cooperation is very very important uh, it's why I feel that this is for me a priority to attend things like this when I have the opportunity. Uh, I was very glad I could come. I look forward to next year. Thank you so much for coming.